We judge women by the clothes that they wear because we personally think that it's uncalled for. We judge the black man walking by, but by now our country should be ridden of racial discrimination down to its core. We judge the cop across the street because of mistakes made by officers before. We judge gays because our religions might claim that same-sex relationships are not what God had in store. We judge the people who cannot afford the popular merchandise. Then we judge the richer folk who prefer to buy things for a higher price. We're judging people around us, whether they're mean or they're nice, and if we continue judging, how will this world ever suffice? And yet we judge, all of us we judge. Because this world that we live in is the type where so much attention is paid to what I wear. Tight pants and strappy heels should never define me more than the way I carry myself. They judge Muslims that we follow a religion of peace, neglecting the fact that so many innocent followers of Islam are ending up deceased. Judging us here in America, where they claim that we are entitled to our own beliefs, but we are blind. All of us, we are blind. An eye for an eye. Please, Allah, hidden as sirat al mustaqim guide us to the right path, because we are lost. All of us, we are lost. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended for us to be perfect, then we would be. Sculpted or not, curvy or thin, happy or sad, covered or bare, whatever society's perception of perfection may be. And yet none of us are, but still we say mean things and we go too far. We are aiming for perfection and searching for it wherever we go, looking for it in the people that we know. But none of us are perfect and we never will be, so really what are we doing? We are wasting our time placing the flaws of others under a magnifying glass. And why do we do this? Because it helps with our own flaws that we wish to dismiss. And by striving for something that we will never obtain, we are spiraling downward. If we do not change our ways, then our crash will be inevitable. So why do we do this? Why do we do this? Is it a result of jealousy? So fixated on what others have that we want, it's changing our mentalities? I don't know, but maybe. Do you remember when Hitler was striving for perfection? Because he said in his speeches that his master race would be blonde haired, blue eyed, and tall in height. So he killed people left and right because he was consumed with a nasty parasite made out of hatred and a desire to grab hold of something that will never be within our reach. And that's exactly what it is, our longing for perfection. It's just a deceiving misconception. Perfection is the ultimate illusion, you see, because you and I and everyone else around us would probably define it differently. So I think it's time that we share the key to a way we can change our lives, making us more happy. Often focusing on physical imperfections, yet we are remaining morally bankrupt, and now the rest is up to us. Though we may not be perfect ourselves, perfection exists. And though we may not be perfect ourselves, we are still able to admire perfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. Allah the Almighty, if he wished it, he could use one hand to turn the world upside down, while it takes us two hands to tie our shoes. And Allah Adim, if he wished it, he could use one hand to turn up the world upside down, while if all seven million people on earth tried to perform this test together, we could never accomplish it. Allah, Malik Yawm al-Din, Master of the Day of Judgment. Allah, you and only you can judge us. So let them judge women for the clothes that they wear, and let them judge him for the color of his skin. Let them judge her for working a job where she's just aiming to protect the people around her. Let them judge, let them judge. They shouldn't be judging, but they are not perfect, and at the end of the day, the things that they say do not define us. Sticks and stones, sticks and stones may break my bones, and though my bones may heal, sometimes words can scar, and even in those moments, we still must forgive those who wrong us, because making mistakes is in our nature, and that's okay. Being perfect is not who we are, and I will gladly accept that fact, because imperfections make us extraordinary. And the sooner that we learn to embrace our flaws and that of those around us, the more content that we will be.